Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's my uh, pleasure to welcome the uh, Diversity and Equity Inclusion um, Committee or, or parts thereof. Um, I'll take a brief moment to introduce our, our three presenters tonight and um, we'll just, uh, I'll read them in the order they were given to me. Um, I will take the liberty of making some editorial edits <laughs> in, the, uh, in the goodness of time. So uh, Sadia Khan, um, I'm so glad to welcome you here tonight. Um, um, I know that uh, in your bio, your parents immigrated to Canada as refugees and it's, we understand the word comes from refuge, a state of being sheltered from pursuit, danger and difficulty. Sadia is deeply invested in her community and is humbled to be involved with progressive organizations and initiatives in Red Deer uh, and across Alberta, including the welcoming and inclusive committees of Red Deer, uh, Rotary District 5360 Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Chair and Chair of the Alberta Association of Multicultural Education and also Vice Chair at Youth HQ. Um, Saudi is also a member of Alberta's Hate Crimes Committee and sits on the Red Deer Local Immigration Partnership Advisory Board. Currently, Saudi works at the Central Alberta Sexual Assault Support Center, where she manages the police, court, and community support programs. She approaches her work through an intersectional framework and is passionate about connecting people of all backgrounds, women, men, gender, non-functioning people, indigenous peoples, immigrants, people of diverse faiths, abilities, and ages. Sadia is a certified facilitator for the first responder to sexual assault and abuse training with the Association of Alberta Sexual Assault Services. So welcome. Next, I'll introduce uh, Hiba. Hiba loves, uh, Hiba, sorry, Hiba loves to um, take new initiatives to foster changes um, and development. She got involved in Rotary at the beginning of her high school, where she served as the president of the Interact Club in her grade 12 year. She is chairperson of the Interaction Board of Directors, which is a team dedicated to organizing the annual Interaction Symposium, which, which provides an opportunity for interactors across the district uh, to network and collaborate. After graduating, uh, she became uh, the first Interact um, representative, a role that allows her to represent Interact voices, create collaborative events, and provide guidance to Interact clubs across the district. She is now in her second year of a Bachelor of Science degree majoring in biological science and aspires to make a difference in health and the healthcare industry. She joined the University of Calgary Rotaract Club as Vice President of Events last year, and this year serves as a Senior Vice President for the club. She is a Marketing Coordinator for the Biological Students Association at the University, which is a club dedicated to refining the program, offering professional development, and hosts special events for students. Ibba serves as the sub-chairperson for the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee and sits on the District Board of Directors as an Interact representative. She is passionate for advocating for minorities and creating safe space for everyone to be accepted for who they are. She was awarded a Paul Harris Fellowship Award by the district for her contributions. Justine Ward. Justine has been an active rotor actor in our district for over five years. She started with the University of Calgary Rotaract Club, where she held numerous positions, including two years as president. She has also served for two years as our district Rotaract representative and was selected to attend the International Assembly in January as one of the 50 Rotaractors from around the world. Currently, she serves as our Rotaract chair with the LGBTQS and uh, is the sub-chair of the DEI committee and sits on our Global Grant Scholarship Committee and Board of Directors. In the new Rotary year, she will be taking on a new role at the, at the district as our youth chair, uh, our youth services chair. Justin loves to work with youth and in and out of Rotary and currently works at Immigration Services Calgary with a program uh, for newcomer youth. 
welcome my fellow Rotarians. I look forward to your presentation tonight. What a, what a pleasure it is uh, and to hear amazing Heba and Justine, your bios like, once more and, and to be on this panel with you um, and to present this webinar. Yeah, so my name is Sadia Han, as Brian introduced me. My pronouns are she and her, uh, past chair for the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Committee, and a current member. I'd like to start with the land acknowledgement. In the spirit of reconciliation, in my process of learning to understand the magnitude of histories, languages, cultures, communities, and stories of the original people and of creation of this country that has historically been missing, I'm humbled and grateful for the traditional knowledge keepers and elders who are still with us today and those who have gone before us. I acknowledge as an immigrant settler and as a beneficiary of the Canadian dream, I feel incredibly lucky to be living and working in this beautiful land of Turtle Island, now called Canada. I acknowledge the many First Nations, Blackfoot, Sotina, Cree, Stony, Nakoda peoples, traditional Métis and so too territory, whose footsteps have marked these lands for generations and continue to do so. For me personally, land acknowledgement is an act of reconciliation that involves reflection and responsibility to honor the past and to be aware of the present, to thank the Indigenous people for the care they have given this nation and for sharing its space so that we may be gathered here today. I strive to make Red Deer into a place where healing can occur, truths can be told, and hidden stories can be unearthed. I also strive to never take for granted the privilege and the complexity of living and working on this land. Um, if you're interested and you would like to know and learn more about the Indigenous history and the treaties which we all live, I highly recommend taking the time to attend a free open line online course called Indigenous Canada through U of A. And with that, let's get started. So uh, I am going to just speak briefly for the first few minutes here. I'll cover, really talk about um, the why behind this survey, what was the objective of the survey, and what was the goal of this survey, and what is it that we hope to achieve moving forward with this. Um, so as diversity, equity, and inclusion grow into a top priority for Rotary International, the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee is committed, and we have always been committed since the inception of this committee, to help our district through education, understanding, and support in creating inviting communities to all cultures, experiences, and identities through our Rotary Clubs. The objective, uh, the objective of the survey was uh, to assess the current climate of Rotary Club's experience, training, and opportunities related to diversity, equity, inclusion support. A top priority for Rotary is, is growing, and, and we, we see that happening. Diversifying and keeping our membership is really key uh, in making sure that we reflect the communities we serve, and, and we're inclusive of all cultures and experiences and identities. Um, being very intentional about creating clubs that are more open and inclusive and fair to all, um, being very mindful of building goodwill and, and benefits uh, that benefits our communities. So to help us achieve our goal, the RI Board of Directors passed a diversity, equity, inclusion statement, which reads as, as a global network that strives to build a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change, Rotary values diversity and celebrates the contributions of people of all backgrounds, regardless of their age, ethnicity, race, color, abilities, religion, socioeconomic status, culture, sex, sexual orientation, and gender identity. Rotary will cultivate a diverse, equitable, and inclusive culture in which people from underrepresented groups have greater opportunities to participate as members and leaders. So this is the RI statement that we are very intentional about putting everywhere because this guides our work. 
Uh, in making diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, a priority is everyone's responsibility from Rotary members to the staff at the Secretariat. So it does not just fall on certain individuals within the clubs to take that on and to move that work forward. It has to be each and every one of us. So the goal of this survey really was, um, and this is what my hope was when I came in as a chair, is let, let's just kind of get the temperature of our clubs. If I'm going to be part of, um, you know, this great Rotary uh, 5360 district, then I need to be very intentional. What is it that I am bringing to the table? And I had amazing committee members who supported me and who sat with me and we went through many uh, versions and drafts as well. And Justine and Heba are a witness to that. So this is such a collective that we did as a committee. It's not one person who did this. Um, everyone who participated in the optional survey that we had sent out to everyone and provided feedback in return, it really helped our district uh, better to serve our clubs. And our hope is that this survey will help our um, committee better understand the current climate and the needs of each club as it relates to diversity, equity, and inclusion experience. Um, we want to kind of look at the training opportunities, bring that awareness piece um, to further our mission of Rotary's global vision. So um, we thank everyone who took the time to fill out this survey and I will pass it on to Heba who will um, share some stats with everyone and uh, we'll continue the conversation from there. Thanks Sadia. Um, hi everyone my name is Heba Sayed. Uh, my pronouns are she and her. Um, I'm really glad to be here alongside Justine and Sadia. Some people that I truly value because I'm always learning from them and it's been an honor working with them and yeah um, alongside everyone else in the committee as well so I'm just gonna go through a couple of stats oh it's not letting me okay there we go so um, we're not going to go through every single question we asked on the survey um, but uh, we just wanted to highlight some interesting ones um, so I'm just going to be talking about them so one of the questions asked, um, our club is committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion. So 42% people answer neutral, 10.5% um, answered strongly agree, 42% answered agree, and 5.3% answered disagree. So there's a lot of neutralities here, a lot of agreements here, some disagreements. Um, so it's very important to talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion in your uh, clubs, um, as well as uh, take up initiatives along these concepts. Although these conversations might be uncomfortable for some, these uncomfortable conversations are necessary in order for us to grow and learn from each other. Um, if you have a question about something, ask, ask. That's the best way to learn and grow. Um, so yeah, and also diversity, equity, and inclusion is not a trend. It's a priority and it needs to be taken seriously. Um, so yeah, that was an interesting stat that we thought. Um, another one was, I feel like my club members understand who I really am. So 32% um, people said neither agree or disagree. 63% answered agree and 5% answered disagree. So again, a lot of neutralities here, a lot of agreements. Um, and this is really interesting because we truly never know what someone is going through. Um, and it's, it's interesting to see, um, like you might know me, but do you really know me? Um, and it's interesting because sometimes we, we really need to be that person that's checking up on other people. It might seem like you're not creating a change in someone's life, but you never know. Asking someone how they're feeling or checking in on them, um, it might it, it would mean the world to them and you, you might not know. So I'm challenging you guys to be that person that's checking up on people um, and yeah. So I'm just going to move on to some comments um, that we received from you guys. So what specific actions have you or your club taken to ensure diversity, equity, in and inclusion within the club? Some people said none, and some people said, I don't know. COVID-19 has destroyed our efforts. Uh, someone created a DEI task force that made recommendations to the board, two of which were adopted, just being open and welcoming. Treaty acknowledgements, all are welcome. 
recruiting more women and people of varied ethnic backgrounds, just being open and welcoming, creating, working to create an interact club at the Indigenous Middle School and also a satellite club on the Blood Reserve. So there's a variety of comments here and it was really interesting to see. Um, and all, all these questions were really intentional. We really wanted to make people reflect on their actions and challenge them to be more involved in their community around all these aspects. So now I'm gonna pass it over to Justine, who's gonna take on some more steps. Thank you so much. Um, and yeah, happy to be here with everyone. Um, yeah, I just wanted to pick up on something that you um, had just said there, Hiba, about the, the intentionality of the survey of that the, the data that we get from the survey is absolutely helpful and it's so wonderful, but the survey served a second purpose and that was to get people to reflect about their own positionality in their district, thinking about how, how we fit into our clubs, um, what role we play in our clubs and making an inclusive environment. And I think that the survey really works on a couple different points. Obviously it's not perfect and um, you know, hopefully in a few years we can revisit this and um, make some tweaks, all that good stuff. Um, I will just also add, please feel free to use the Q&A function uh, or the chat box to leave us any questions. Um, happy to answer questions about the survey, just diversity, equity, and inclusion in general. Um, we do have a discussion question at the end, which um, we will use to fill some time if we um, find that we have a lot of it. Um, Anyways, <laughs> we'll move on to some more stats here. So these ones are a little bit easier to, to sort of read and digest because there's just a yes and no. Uh, so the first one we have on the screen is, do you discuss diversity, equity, and inclusion during your club meetings when talking to new members, community organizations, and family? So majority, slight majority said no, um, which is maybe not surprising. Um, you know, these, these are uncomfortable conversations. Sometimes it's hard to make that first step to even talk about it. Um, so that's a good, a good thing for us to know that a lot of the clubs aren't necessarily having these conversations. And that's always a good starting point um, to see that's the first stumbling block. We're not having the conversations. So what do we do? How do we start having those conversations? The second question here, I think, is really interesting and, and maybe <laughs> slightly poorly worded um, as I was trying to analyze it uh, in preparation. So have you experienced challenges within your club discussing diversity, equity, and inclusion? And we have about a 66, 60% 60 saying no, um, and then about 30% saying yes. Um, so again, the issue here, if we look at that first question, is that if we're not having the conversations, we're not having the challenges that come with the conversations. So some people probably said no for that reason. Um, I also want people to maybe think about the fact that not having challenges might be a challenge in and of itself. If people aren't uncomfortable during these conversations, if, if we're not personally invested in having these conversations, we're probably not moving forward. There should be some level of challenge. I'm not saying like an all out conflict with, you know, raised blood pressure, people leaving the room. But when we're talking about identities, especially, it's normal to be a little bit uncomfortable and to get people to challenge. And those conversations, that's where the dialogue happens. It doesn't have to be a conflict, but we do need that dialogue to meet in the middle, to you know, slowly pull people over to one end or, you know, whatever our intention is about having these conversations. Um, we do need that little, a little bit of push and pull to, to really keep moving forward. Um, but I think this ties really in really well into the next question, if you don't mind moving forward. Justine, before you move on, uh, we've had a question uh, put in the Q&A uh, box. Um, one of our participants tonight would like to know how many Rotarians responded to the survey. And do you have some demographics as to um, the respondents themselves? Any data there? Yeah, for sure. We had about 230 people respond to uh, the survey. Um, 
you know, potentially a next step for us would be putting together a proper report with all of the demographic information. So that's a little bit easier to say, because I can sort of say some things off the top of my head that, you know, mm -hmm. I, I don't think are surprising. Majority of the respondents were male. A majority come from a, a white or European ethnic background. Um, most people were middle-aged and above. Mm -hmm. um, those were more our main demographics, but we can absolutely maybe put together a nice packet um, as a follow-up to this conversation tonight. Um, that'll lay out a little bit more context for these answers, absolutely. Yeah, and, and just to let you know, we will have a Q&A, Brian, towards the end, once we're gone through the slides as well. So we welcome questions, so please keep them coming. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah, so just um, feeding off of that conversation about, um, you know, challenges. Um, so this was a really interesting question to get some feedback from Rotarians, and I, I want to pick up on a couple of themes that we do see in these responses. So the question is, what do you see as the principal barriers within your club for taking on inclusion and equity uh, initiatives? So as we see here, we have, we need more leaders. Where do we start? There are no barriers other than awareness. Rotary has systemic barriers such as annual dues, cost of weekly meetings, time. The time required to participate can be a lot. We have lack of knowledge. There is not a very diverse community and it is hard to get members. Some people think it's all about politics and we lose members. So we have a couple common themes coming through with some of these responses and, and we'll just we have some time, we'll pick up on a couple of them here. Um, so when looking at this last, these last two really got me thinking, you know, there's an issue in our district, I think we're all fairly aware in terms of membership. We're struggling to recruit, we're struggling to retain. Um, some clubs are seeing decreases year after year in terms of our membership. And I get that there can be <laughs> a little bit of a conflict here in terms of, our clubs are trying to survive, they're trying to recruit new members, and, and that's got to be the focus for a lot of people because that's what a club is, is it's your members. And then you have us at Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion telling you, oh no, you got to be all of these things, you got to be more inclusive, you got to do this, you got to do that. And it can kind of feel like two competing variables almost because what, it, what do you prioritize? And I, I do want to sort of you know, from my perspective, you do need to do both. You know, obviously we do need new members, but doing the work, the diversity, equity, and inclusion work will help you recruit. It will help create a more inclusive club and it will help with your club culture that you will run into less recruitment issues as you keep progressing. So it's really important to, to keep these both in mind. They're both good things to work on and they work together, they're not competing. So um, the next one I wanted to sort of point out is this idea of like, where do we start? What the, there's no awareness, there's a lack of knowledge. Um, and this was something that we um, picked up at a district conference um, during Bowtie uh, Todd Jenkins, his presentation about DE&I. Um, a lot of the questions and the comments coming through were about like, where do we start? How do we start doing this work? Because, and I think, you know, diversity, equity, inclusion seems like this big thing and it's very vague. It's, you know, three terms and sometimes we don't know how to define them and how do we work with them? And I think that can cause people to really stop in their tracks and say like, I just don't know where to start. Whereas if we, you know, look at some past initiatives when, you know, with, let's just take it, for example, women in Rotary. That was a really tangible thing that we could all imagine, you know, get more women in Rotary. It's a very like cut and dry one thing. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is all of these things. Diversity of race, gender, sexual orientation, religion, so many more things, difference of abilities that feels a lot more daunting than just this one thing. So absolutely, we understand that it's a lot. It's a lot to take in and it's a lot 
to learn and, and no one can be an expert in, in all of these different diversities. Um, it's a lot to you know unpack. It's a really popular phrase that we use. It's a lot to unpack. And yeah, it is hard to take that first step. So we're glad people are telling us that it is hard to take that step so that we can help you like create a little bit more actionable items, things that are, are easy, things like starting with a land acknowledgement. That's an inclusion initiative, you know, making sure that your club venue offers maybe like halal and kosher options. That's a step in the right direction as well. That's an initiative. Um, they don't have to be big scale things. They can be little things that we work towards um, that will help build an overall more inclusive culture. Okay, I think I'm done on, on this for now. We can, I see a couple of questions have come in so we can definitely pick up on this conversation in a minute, but I will pass the mic back to Sadia. That unmute button. Where is it at? <laughs> Thank you so much, Heba. And I love the idea because we have all of the um, results and the answers and we know how many Rotarians participated in this survey. We will absolutely, as a committee, come up with some sort of a, a, a short kind of a report that is accessible and everyone has a copy of that. So. Um, I will cover this slide and then we will move on to kind of the Q&A that are coming in, which is so great. Um, we want to talk about future direction and action items, but at the same time, I do want to pick up what Justine talked about. Uh, this DEI, um, the buzzwords are, you know, are not to be on their own. Any initiative that Rotarians and the Rotary Clubs take on, it has to be built into that, right? So it has to be built into every initiative. Are we having these bigger conversations around equity and inclusion? Um, so that is really important to remember as well, because it's just taking those small bite sizes and then just, just starting. Um, at the same time, I really want to be um, just put this out there very clearly, when we talk about DEI, we're not only talking about diversity within races or, you know, people who look different, it has to be to having a conversation about creating inclusive spaces. It's having conversation about um, disabilities. It's, uh, you know, it, it is so much bigger than just race when we talk about diversity, equity, inclusion. And at the same time, we have to have these deeper conversations that are under the bigger iceberg, which is uh, goes beyond food and culture and what are you wearing, right? So it is absolutely the deeper conversations. And it's um, just think of it as not as a big a daunting task, but something small and how is it that we can start. And we have amazing clubs who are doing such good work already. Um, so here we want to talk about the future direction and some action items, some actionable items. What is it that the um, clubs can really take and then and, and start moving ahead? We did recognize the need um, and we did see this in the survey as well around training and awareness and, and where do we start the conversation? So um, I'm going to pass this on to Heba to talk about diversity champions. This is this is an idea. This is um, that came to inception when we were having these conversations. How do we do this? So I'm going to pass it on to Heba to talk about it just a little bit more. And Heba, after you're done, feel free to pass it back on to me. Thanks, Sadia. So um, the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Committee has been working on this initiative and we're just like preparing just to start it up. Um, so basically, um, we thought we had a lot of Rotarians coming to us and being like, we don't have information and we and we would like to learn more, but we don't know where to start. Kind of like what Justine was talking about um, and the feedback we received. So um, the committee members and myself, uh, we got together and we said, why don't why don't we start? from the UN calendar. Why don't we look at the different days that happen throughout the year and try to provide a little bit of information um, to the district uh, to, uh, so that they can have these conversations in their club. So we've identified um, a couple pilot clubs um, and diversity champions within those clubs to take on this project. So the diversity champions will receive um, information about different UN calendar dates and initiatives going on. Um, and their role will be to 
kind of start those conversations within um, their clubs. And it doesn't stop there because they will give us feedback and we will have check-ins with them and see where we can uh, provide more resources or awareness and further help. Um, and yeah, just planting the seed and starting the conversations is what we wanted to uh, kind of come up with the diversity champions, but not stopping there and also taking action. But yeah, that's my little spiel. I'll pass it back to Sadia. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Hiba. So when we talk about the training and the awareness piece, and this is what we get to hear a lot, okay? So, but there isn't a magic tool that we can just provide you as a committee and say, okay, here you go. Um, and, you know, this will just solve all the problems. It really is about being intentional. When we talk about training and awareness, it's um, whenever I have the conversation with the Rotarians, it, it, it is to reach out to your own community. There are There's a wealth of resources that exist already when we talk about training and awareness. Um, and, and in return, what that happens is when you invite speakers within the community, within the organizations, we really are building that bridge as in, okay, so we are a Rotary Club. This is the work you do and you're the knowledge keeper. Come and be a speaker. Um, so for example, let's talk about Black History Month, right? In June, we're having in, um, Indigenous Day that's coming up as well. So being intentional about reaching out and us. Uh, saying, well, someone within our club is the one who has to do the training and the awareness piece, reach out to the community organizations that already exist and have them come in and, and be part of this training and awareness piece as well. Um, having the accessible tools and the resources uh, to help the club as well is really important. Um, we did hear a lot about we are, the clubs are saying we really want to focus on the training and the awareness piece and what does that look like moving forward. Um, and there's easy ways to go about and doing that and when Heba talks about the diversity champions really we're calling it a bit of a pilot project with certain clubs right now where we will identify and they have already identified there are champions within our clubs who are doing this work already our hope is to connect them to this committee and the and be kind of that liaison person where they're not feeling like well we have to come up with all of the resources we will work with those clubs as a committee as well uh, community representation piece is really important when are your clubs representing the communities that they're serving. We're not necessarily saying the Rotary Clubs come in with the hero, uh, saviorism sort of a, a mentality. We're here to save our, um, you know, certain community organizations, but rather I feel like it, it is to have those deeper conversations and work with the community and build that bridge and find out exactly uh, what is the work that they do? How is it that you can support them at a deeper level? Um, and just, you know, take action within your own club. It's just, just do it. Just have that conversation. If you feel like, okay, we're all looking the same around the table sitting here. How is it that we can change that? Our committee is always here to help facilitate that as well. Um, the committee has done amazing work in putting together resources in the format of videos as well. And we will share that link with you also. Um, you know, you're like, what is a term something like Islamophobia? What does that mean? Uh, what is it when Sadia and Justine and Heba shared their pronouns? What is all that about? We have that uh, knowledge, the bank of knowledge that the committee members have taken the time and has done really good work in creating those resources. Um, yeah, Heba and Justine, would you like to add anything to it? I think you covered it, Sadia. Um, I'm just going through the chat box at the same time and Steve is saying, please mention to Indigenous Committee and our initiative for training that will happen. Absolutely. So the Indigenous community sits under the umbrella of the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Committee. Um, our hope is, you know, to work together um, and, and to make changes happen. And like Justine said in the very beginning, one of the small actionable items is 
doing the land acknowledgement, but at the same time, having the deeper conversation about why are we doing the land acknowledgement and what is that about? Um, possibly inviting in an elder uh, with the proper protocol as well and, and having that conversation. And that is part of your committees. Um, it's on the agenda. So being very intentional about having these conversations and putting the diversity, equity, inclusion topics on the meeting agenda as well, where there's time time allocated to have this conversation. What I am going to do is I'm going to go through the chat box here and um, to see what is it, what's happening. It's, it's a busy, busy chat box. So that is so good to know. Someone is saying uh, diversity champions are such a good idea. Absolutely. It's an amazing idea. We cannot wait to roll it out. And, and what this really looks like is that um, the clubs themselves are not taking on all of the work, we are here to facilitate those conversations um, with the clubs to move this work forward. Heba, would you like to add something to it? I know you worked so hard in doing this work. Um, yeah, no, I, I also like, I feel like it's so important to have because honestly, sometimes I feel like that too. I feel like, where do I start? Like, how do I get uh, more educated? So um, like everyone is feeling like that. So you're not alone. Um, we're all lear learning together. Um, we can't possibly know it all, but we can be very intentional with our actions and be more inclusive to others. So yeah, I, I felt like it, it was really necessary and, um, and, and I'm really excited to start it up. And if you are interested and if you feel like you haven't really heard about this idea before, if you want to continue the conversation, um, please definitely do reach out to us. On the next slide, we have um, a little bit of a reflection question as well, but all of our contact information is there as well. So you can note that down. You can send us an email, slide into our DMs, anything. Um, yeah, we're always checking. Um, yeah, that's it for me. Um, thank you, Hiba. And thank you for putting that question there because that's an intentional question. But at the same time, this question is more like a blanket um, reflection question as well. What does accessibility look like? When we are being intentional about creating um, our clubs to be equitable and, and to be inclusive, what kind of spaces are we inviting individuals into as well? So those are, we're going to leave that with you for you to kind of ponder on for a few minutes. And in the meantime, I've been able to pull up the Q&A here. So uh, between the three of us, let's do this. We know we can do this. Okay, so Franco is saying, to what degree are our hidden biases and our position of privilege a barrier to moving towards our diversity and inclusion? It's, it's a big question. <laughs> um, I, I, maybe I can just start taking that apart just a little bit. So when, when we have a conversation about hidden biases, we're having a conversation around implicit biases, around an unconscious biases, um, and, and recognizing the position of privilege. Um, you know, do not look at it as a barrier. So I'll go back to the implicit biases and the hidden biases as well. We all have them. We all have unconscious biases. Really is, it is to focus on how is it that we're navigating our way through in having those biases. Are we making those quick kind of judgments, um, you know, that we tend to make because we're in a hurry? Or are we using the deeper part of our brain and saying, okay, hold on, wait a minute. Why am I thinking this way? Or why do I have this bias? And let me explore what that looks like and have that deeper conversation. So um, that's what my um, suggestion would be to the first part of the question. And the position of privilege, a barrier, do not look at it as a barrier. We all hold positions of privilege um, in one way or another. So really, it, it's not a barrier Mo moving forward to our diversity and inclusion. It really is to having those conversations and, and thinking on that continuum, where is it that your club is sitting at and where is it that you envision your club to be going and what does that look like? And really having those small uh, size conversations and, and taking it one step at a time. I'll pass it on to you, Justine and Hiba to add. I, I don't know if I have too much to add to that. I would say, um, you know, thinking about positions of privilege, um, of course, it, it 
our systems are created in such a way that you want to stay in that position of privilege. It's comfortable. Um, it benefits you. Um, so I understand maybe why we would call it like a barrier because, yeah, you have to grapple with the fact that um, part of moving towards an equitable society is is maybe lowering down a bit um, and bringing everyone up at the same time. So um, definitely good things to like interrogate and, and think about. Um, but yeah, no, as Saudi said, just we just gotta just gotta do do the work, do the things. <laughs> Absolutely. And it is getting out of that discomfort, right? Because we sit in this comfort. These systems have really systems of privilege have, um, uh, you know, certain members of our community have advanced and certain have not. So it's having that hard conversation and, and, and saying, okay, I recognize my privilege, but how is it that I can use my privilege to lift everyone up as well, right? So not necessarily looking at it as a barrier, but saying, okay, Yes, because that is something that you cannot get away with, right? You are born in that privilege. You may look a certain way and that has benefited you. But how is it that you can use that privilege in a very positive way? Hey, bud, did you have anything to add? I think you guys covered it all. Um, but I will add um, just I feel like media and the news and all this information that comes at us really feeds into our um, our perceptions on things. So I just wanted to just give you a reminder to look deeper than what's being presented in front of you um, and to be really knowledgeable about what you're looking at and uh, to understand the gravity of the situation because we're seeing it around us today right now. Um, there's so much things on the media that are not true um, and can be harmful to a certain group of people. Um, and just to really uh, question yourselves before you repost something on Instagram or Facebook, really, like, do you know what you're talking about? Um, just to really um, make sure that you know and you're aware of what you're saying. Um, and if you don't know, uh, I'm challenging you to reach out and to, to there, all the resources are there in front of you. Um, so I think it's just really important to be aware about what's going on. Thank you, Hiba. And as we work our way through these uh, Q&A that are coming in or, or looking at the chat box as well, we want to hear from you. Um, these are the conversations to be had collectively. We're not here with all of the answers. We're just taking on doing this work and presenting it to, to the Rotarians and to the Rotary Clubs. But uh, we do want to hear that. What are your thoughts around how is it that you can make your clubs more accessible? What does that look like for you um, as an individual level and, and at a club level as well? So um, yeah, share some of those thoughts with us in the chat box and I will move through the question here. Um, this is from Rhea Graham. Would a DEI newsletter be an approach going out to all about the benefits for DEI membership? We love that idea. Um, and, and a good segue to answer that question is that always looking for more members who are invested in doing this work in a really good and an intentional way as well. So um, when we did do this survey, we had a good number of individuals who had reached out and said, yes, we would like to carry this work forward because this work, A, cannot fall um, on certain people who look a certain way as well. This, this work has to be done in a collective way. It's not, uh, diversity, equity, inclusion is not um, a challenge or an issue of, you know, when we talk about the marginalized or the BIPOC community, each one of us have to carry this work and to move it forward. So think about it more in a collective rather than an individual as well. And we love the idea of a DEI newsletter. So come and join the committee. Um, and, le and let's make this happen. Let's let's move this forward. Hey, Brian, Justine, I'll pass it on to you. You covered it. Yeah, okay. I don't want to take up like too much time because I, I understand there's a lot of questions, but I really love the idea and I'm probably going to write that down and bring it up at our next meeting. Um, okay, so it, this is from Thaj saying, is fear and discomfort of different... Um, or difference dominates Rotarians? Uh, Thaj, I'm going to ask you to maybe 
uh, elaborate just a little bit more um, on um, what is it that you're thinking behind this question before I take that on and answer that? Um, perhaps what you may be talking about, the fear and the discomfort of um, different individuals, um, or when you talk about the dominates of Rotarians, perhaps you're alluding to the systems of the Rotary and how everyone kind of tends to look the same as well. So I'm going to leave that to you, Thaj. Uh, feel free to elaborate just a little bit and let's have a conversation around that. Christine is saying a number of clubs have connected Oh, no, have commenced the land acknowledgement at the start of their meetings, yet some clubs are experiencing significant pushback from their members. What could be the reason? Christine, I came across that um, here in Red Deer as well. And um, those are the conversations, those are the deeper conversations to be had. And we're all treaty peoples and, and we're all settlers to this land. So I would explore, okay, so what is this pushback about and have that conversation in a good way and maybe have an elder come to um, a meeting as well where the deeper conversations can be had because we want to do this work in a good way, not confronting uh, and saying, well, you know, we must do this and imposing the land acknowledgement until everyone kind of understands and is on the same page within the club. So explore that reason and, and find out what's happening. Justine and Heba, feel free to unmute yourselves and, and chime in. Yeah, I was just going to say um, another thing that our committee does is um, a lot of some of the clubs have actually reached out to us and be like, hey, can you talk to our club about how we could be more, um, how we could start up these initiatives. So um, a lot of our members sometimes go and speak to different clubs about what's going on. So yeah, just always shoot us an email if you would like the same thing uh, for more of a, about an awareness component, why land acknowledgements are important, because we can't force it. We need all of us to understand what's going on um, and why they are in so important and why all of the clubs should have them. And understanding the deeper meaning behind the land acknowledgement. Go ahead, Justine. I was just going to echo that sentiment of um, sometimes people can get a bit defensive when they just don't know why. Like people want to know why we do things. Um, and, and knowing the intentionality of the land acknowledgement is really really key here and I also just want to say in a very general way people can be resistant to change and and we fall into that pattern of this is how we've always done it um so asking you know for a new thing that the, that people might not really understand um and sort of saying like this is a, an important thing and and just leaving it at that can can leave people feeling a bit defensive and and not really understanding the why. So I think it's really important that um, we have more like dialogue about why we do things. That's right, and have the dialogue and let that sit with individuals because change is not always easy, um, but to move forward, we, we need to be uh, introducing change. So let, let us sit, sit with people, have the deeper conversation, and things will come around. Chris Rowley is asking, how do people with disabilities join Rotary? Money is a really hard uh, is, is a really hard thing, I think, for people to join. Absolutely, Chris, um, that is a barrier, right? And, and with, as a club, what are some of the solutions that you can come up with? Can someone sponsor a Rotarian within a co uh, community who can be part of the Rotary Club as well? So really, this is thinking outside the box and having that conversation and, and, and recognizing that this is a barrier for people to join. Uh, Mary saying, will the UN calendar dates be public on the district website or somewhere? Absolutely. I think um, when Hiba and the committee talks about the diversity champions, myself and Hiba have looked at the UN calendar and we, we chose a few dates as well intentionally, but you're not limited to that. So that will be all part of the package for the diversity champions. Keith is saying we do the land acknowledgement each week, but I think members may tune out. I liked what Sadia said in her acknowledgement and wonder if she would share it so that I can help the members to understand it better. Absolutely, Keith. Yes, I can do that. <laughs> uh, Frank was saying, given your thinking and reflection outline for us, what success will look like in five to 10 years for 5360 because we have all intentionally adopted diversity, equity, inclusion. Um, 
outline for us what success will look like? I guess we're thinking about the future. Keep moving forward. The future will look bright. Be intentional about creating these hard and deep conversations where, you know, some Rotarians within a club will be challenged and they will not, you know, go back to this is how we've always done things. And why is it that we need to do things differently? And that requires uh, a lot of patience persistent but really at the end of the day is having the conversations continuously. Justine and Heba anything to add? I feel like and I feel like we a lot of the change we are already seeing it there's been so many uh, welcoming clubs even for people to like willing like willing to like take up the diversity champions initiative and giving it some light is just evidence that we are we are already growing and we need to continue with this work and this is why we are doing this work so yeah there's not like a there's not going to be a, a picture that we can paint and being like this is what change is uh, because it's it's a continual process and as long as we're trying um, we will get there <laughs> I believe in us It'll be slow, but that's okay. You have to keep moving. And, and one thing that I always go back to is engage the youth, engage the youth, because we want uh, our clubs to really uh, reflect the communities um, that we live in, and not only in race, but in, in every aspect that there is. So, you know, our our clubs really do need to be starting to engage that youth, being intentional about it, setting that tone and being those role models. And we will be good in five to 10 years. Um, Steve is saying, what can club members do to developing trusting relationships with other ethnic or indigenous groups? That's a great question, Steve. Be intentional. Be intentional about creating that trust and relationship and be intentional about listening. Um, not necessarily going in and saying, okay, we, we got the answer this is how we can come in and help you but rather just kind of sometimes being a fly on the wall and this is how I do things as an ally you do not go in and say I am an ally what you do is you go in and you listen um, and you hear and then you come back and say okay with my humble you know learnings how is it that I can be part of this journey with you? So this really goes back to not going in with this uh, hero saviorism, but really going in with that intentionality uh, of creating those good relationships. And Margaret is saying, could the survey be done annually to track progress? Absolutely. We need more committee members to help us do this work. It took three or four of us to do this um, almost two years, I want to say so. I, that's a great, uh, great feedback, Margaret. Go ahead, Justine. Yeah, so I was just going to go back to Steve's question really quick. Um, I want to say that I one of my favorite things about being in Rotary and, and being with Rotarians is that we're so action oriented. We get stuff done really quickly. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> building relationships takes a lot of time. Um, and so we might go in with the best of intentions to say we want to do a project. Um, we want to help like how can we help and and approach it that way and, and start the conversation that way but it really it does it does take time to sort of um you know situate yourself in that um in the broader community as well and and say let's build a relationship and let's figure out how we can work together how can we leverage our resources to help you and and how can we learn from each other it, it definitely takes time, so we have to keep in mind our rotary timeline we might just need to extend it just a little bit. Um, and yeah, and to Margie's question about the survey, I think um, maybe an abridged version every year um, is good. And then we kind of do almost like the long form and the short form census, you know, to, to balance it out because it was quite extensive. Um, for this year, and it's good to get that baseline, but I don't know how much change we'll see in just a single year. Um, so yeah, but we'll definitely uh, keep thinking about that and, and work on that. 
Absolutely, Justine, and, and this really goes back to we we started this survey initiative about, like I said, um, it, it was a, it was an idea that I came to the committee with. And I'm like, let's let's get the temperature check uh, of our of our Rotary clubs and of the district as well. So I feel like we need to put in some work um, and then continue on that continuum, and then come back and say, okay, we made some, you know, good. good we're moving the needle just a little bit, right? But to move that needle, you have to be intentional, and that goes back to having the conversations around diversity champions and doing doing those those small little things and and I know we talked about the land acknowledgement but at the same time you know sharing pronouns okay well to some of us it comes very easy because we have been intentional about doing our work and learning and listening but at the same time what does it really mean when someone says my pronouns are? And really what you're doing, it's it's a simple step and it isn't for some people, but having that conversation and creating that, that inclusive space. Because what that does is, I talked about who is being invited into these spaces. Um, and if you have a guest that's coming in and you're, you're setting the tone as in my name is, my pronouns are, you're creating that good and safe space for people to feel included. And that all goes back to, you know, creating that equity and inclusive spaces. Um, anything to add, Justine, to that? I think that's, that's perfect. All right, so Brian is telling us we have a few more minutes. Um, in the chat, uh, what I'm seeing is it's it's really good initiatives and really good suggestions on how is it that we can make our clubs more accessible. Um, and to create the clubs accessible, you have to be really intentional. So what I have heard in the past is, um, can you or what I've suggested is, um, can the meeting of the location be moved to, if you're trying to create an intentional relationship with, with certain community groups, can they be invited? Could it be around their time? Could it be in their space? Now, this is prior to COVID and this will be past to COVID just because this is what COVID world looks like right now. But it is just reaching out and extending that hand and saying, hey, this is who we are. Um, this is who you are. How is it that we can work together in the same community that we live in? Because our goals are very similar. Um, and, and that is to create this good space within our communities. Um, okay, now some of the things, excellent present, oh, that, that was great. Uh, listen and silent have the same letters to create the word. So some of, um, this is from Leslie that's coming in. Uh, really, really good suggestions. So as a, as a, what we're taking away from this webinar is for us to encompass um, all of the information that we had received. Um, for the committee to put it together um, and to present it to all of the Rotarians. Obviously, not everyone is here today, so it is accessible for everyone to see. We will put those questions out there as well, but I know everyone wants to know that data piece, um, but we also want to have the deeper conversation around disaggregated data. Who, uh, who are the individuals who filled out this survey as well and who was missing around that and what does that look like? So was it because there were too many questions or did it take too long or what do we need to do? But uh, what I'm taking away, and I'm sure Justine and Heba will agree as well, is just to put this in some sort of a short report and, and present it to everyone. And that is what our hope was all along. Okay, so two more minutes. Justine and Heba, I will uh, let you share the last two minutes. I'm not sure we can end much more eloquently than than you, but yeah, thanks everyone so much for for coming out. Uh, this has been a labor of love um, on, on our part on the committee, um, and it's great to kind of uh, be able to share a bit about it with you. And um, yeah, hopefully everyone took something from the presentation, and uh, I'm sure you have you'll get all of our contact information if you have any questions, all that good stuff. <laughs> Uh, Hiba, I'll pass it over to you one minute. <laughs> Thanks everyone for coming and I'm so happy that I'm a part of Rotary and everyone that I've met has been really, really 
um, inclusive and I, I have so much hope in Rotary and I know we all have it in us um, to grow and to do better and, and that, that's why I'm really glad to be part of it and yeah I'm not going to say too much but I just really appreciate you all for being here. So yeah back to you Brian. <laughs> well thank you very much for uh, another uh, thought-provoking evening and since joining the committee and, and meeting you you have you have challenged me to think you have challenged me to feel and see my world differently. And uh, I, I appreciate that because one of the things we have discussed is doing it where we feel safe and secure with each other, I think both physically and emotionally. So I think that's uh, an underscoring foundation for the kind of hard talk we may all need. So I thank you for the work that you have done in putting this together. I look forward to our next committee meeting and to those are uh, participating tonight. You will receive the PowerPoint. Um, I will go through the chat and the Q&A, add a little bit more substance to it or ask some of the committee members to expand on an answer. And once we tidy it up, uh, the recorded session will be placed on the district's YouTube channel in about a week to 10 days. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Um, be safe wherever you are and we'll look forward till we see each other again. Good night.